Hi guys, welcome back to Noctis Gaming. As we all saw from the preview on Warhammer Day, Legionis Imperialis is getting a new book called The Rise of the Dark Mechanicum. And they mentioned that in this book they'll detail the Schism of Mars, uh, which was basically a civil war that happened on Mars during the Horus Heresy. So what I thought I'd do would take a deep dive into that event uh, so we can all be up to date with the law for when this book comes out. Before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who uh, is coming to watch our videos. Thank you to all of our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider doing so. Um, and if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It's much appreciated. The Schism of Mars is a significant and momentous event in the lore of Warhammer 40,000, set during the late stages of the Horus Heresy. This civil war within the Mechanicum of Mars was not just a brutal conflict over ideology, but one that would alter the very future of both the Imperium and the Adeptus Mechanicus. To fully understand the significance, we must first explore the background of Mars, its culture and its place within the Imperium. Mars, the Red Planet, is not only the cradle of humanity's advanced technology, but also the spiritual heart of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the priesthood that worships the machine god. Since time immemorial, the Mechanicum, as the Adeptus Mechanicus was called before the end of the heresy, has viewed technology as divine, each machine imbued with a fragment of the Omnissiah, the embodiment of machine perfection. This belief system places the machine god at the centre of the Mechanicum's existence, with knowledge and technological advancement regarded as religious quests. The priesthood venerates ancient standard template constructs, or SDCs, the design of the golden age of technology as sacred relics, while its tech priests perform rites and rituals to awaken or pacify the machine spirits in their creations. Before the Horus Heresy, the alliance between Terra and Mars, known as the Treaty of Olympus, united the Emperor's new Imperium with the Mechanicum, binding the Imperium's war machine to the technological mastery of Mars. Though united politically, the Mechanicum maintained a great deal of independence, including its own armies and navies, and had interests that sometimes diverged from those of Terra. The seeds of the Schism of Mars were planted long before the Civil War erupted. Mars had always been a divided world, both physically and ideologically. Beneath its rust-coloured surface lay the Forge Worlds, sprawling manufactura producing weapons, spacecraft and arcane machines. Each Forge World was ruled by a Forge Lord many of whom had views that diverged slightly from the orthodox beliefs of the Mechanicum. Some believed that the Machine God and the Emperor were one and the same, while others held the Omnissiah as a separate and superior entity. Tensions were further exacerbated by the actions of the Emperor. Though the Emperor allowed the Mechanicum to retain much of its autonomy, his growing influence over Imperial technology especially his insistence on rediscovering ancient technologies without the oversight of Mars, created suspicion among certain factions within the priesthood. Meanwhile, deep beneath the surface of Mars, ancient secrets slumbered, chaotic technologies and forbidden knowledge. Some tech priests, driven by a hunger for power, began to turn their gaze towards these dangerous relics straying from the path of the Omnissiah and into the arms of the Dark Mechanicum, a heretical movement that sought to fuse technology with the power of chaos. The Horus Heresy was the ignition point for the Schism of Mars. Horus, the war master and most trusted of the Emperor's sons, fell to the corruption of chaos, 
and in his rebellion sought to bring as many factions as possible under his banner, knowing the strength of the Mechanicum would be pivotal in his war against the Emperor. Horus knew that Mars, with its countless legions of Titans, Legio Cybernetica and vast arsenals, could tip the scales in his favour. He sought out allies within the Mechanicum, most notably Fabricator General Kelbor Howe, the supreme leader of Mars. Kelbor Howe was a figure of great ambition and hubris, whose growing resentment towards the Emperor for meddling in Martian affairs made him susceptible to Horus's promises of greater power and freedom. Horus offered Kelbor Howe forbidden knowledge, technology that would allow him to ascend to greater heights than the rigid doctrines of the machine god could allow. Kelbor Howe, lured by this prospect, declared for Horus. This act of betrayal split the Mechanicum in two. Those who remained loyal to the Emperor, the Loyalist Mechanicum, and those who followed Kelbor Howe into rebellion, later known as the Dark Mechanicum. Thus, the Schism of Mars began. The outbreak of the Schism plunged Mars into a brutal civil war. The once united and industrious forge worlds became battlegrounds as tech priests, Skitari, Titans and cybernetic warriors clashed in vast apocalyptic battles. The fighting wasn't merely about allegiance to Horus or the Emperor. It was a fundamental conflict over the very nature of technology and its purpose. The Loyalist Mechanicum believed in the sacredness of the Machine God and viewed technological innovation as a pathway to communion with the Divine. The Dark Mechanicum, however, rejected these strictures, seeking to harness the powers of chaos and unrestricted knowledge to transcend the limitations of the flesh. They began constructing horrific war machines infused with demonic power, merging flesh and steel in abominable ways. The forges of Mars burned as loyalist and traitor tech priests unleashed devastating weaponry upon one another. Enormous titans, the god machines of the Mechanicum, strode across the plains of Mars, their massive cannons laying waste to entire cityscapes. The Legio Cybernetica, the robotic legions of Mars, fought against one another in endless waves, with control over these soulless armies often shifting as their machine spirits were corrupted or purified. One of the pivotal battles of the Schism was the Battle of Magma City, where Loyalist forces under Archmagos Lexel Kotov fought to defend a vital manufactorum that produced critical components for the Legio Titanicus. The Dark Mechanicum unleashed horrific war constructs, twisted algamations of demonic flesh and machine. Kotov's forces, outnumbered and outmatched, only narrowly managed to secure victory through the use of ancient and barely understood weapons of mass destruction that had lain dormant beneath the planet's surface for millennia. Another major confrontation was the Siege of Olympus Mons, the mountain that housed the primary stronghold of the Fabricator General. Loyalist forces attempted to breach the mighty fortress, knowing that if Kelbor Howe's command centre could be captured, much of the rebellion could be quelled. The siege lasted for weeks, with hundreds of thousands of Skitari dying in the blood-soaked sands of the Martian surface, only for the siege to ultimately end in failure. Kelbor Howe escaped, retreating deeper into the dark places of Mars, from where he would continue his war against the Emperor's forces. The Schism of Mars had long-lasting effects on both the Imperium and the Adaptus Mechanicus. Mars, once the proud heart of technological innovation and production, 
was left devastated by the civil war. Many forge worlds were reduced to ash and entire Titan legions were lost. Perhaps even more devastating was the loss of knowledge. The Mechanicum had always been secretive about his technological discoveries and in the flames of war, much of this precious information was either destroyed or corrupted beyond recognition. The Dark Mechanicum, for its part, fully embraced chaos. Those who sided with Kelbor Howe fled Mars and followed Horus into his rebellion. They would go on to form the foundation of the Dark Mechanicum that plagues the galaxy to this day, constructing twisted demon engines and serving as the technological backbone for the traitor legions. On the other side, the Loyalist Mechanicum evolved into the Adeptus Mechanicus, the form it would take for the rest of the Imperium's history. The schism resulted in a greater centralization of power within the organization and a renewed focus on orthodoxy and control. Any deviation from the accepted dogma of the machine god was ruthlessly stamped out and the Mechanicus became even more secretive and insular, retreating behind layers of ritual and superstition. The Schism of Mars marked the death of the Mechanicum and the birth of the Adeptus Mechanicus. It was a conflict that reshaped Mars, the Mechanicum and the Imperium. For the Imperium, it meant a weakened and fractured ally, one that would be forever superstitious and reluctant to share its full knowledge. For the Mechanicus, it solidified their place in the Imperium but at the cost of their independence and their access to many of the deeper mysteries of the Machine God. The Dark Mechanicum, meanwhile, continues to be a threat to this day, lurking within the Eye of Terror and spreading its twisted creations throughout the galaxy. The Schism of Mars was not just a civil war. It was a battle for the soul of technology itself, a war that continues to echo through the millennia as the forces of chaos and the Imperium vie for control of the galaxy's technological might. In the end, the Schism of Mars serves as a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition, the peril of lost knowledge, and the eternal struggle between the forces of order and chaos. The legacy of Mars's civil war is one that the Imperium will never truly escape, as both the Adeptus Mechanicus and the Dark Mechanicum continue to play vital roles in the fate of humanity.